Chris, how's your I.O. been? Wake up, buddy. What? Come on. I.O. It's Google I.O. Yeah, well, that's, that basically sums up my I.O. experience. Oh, that is too harsh, man. No, too harsh. come on. You were here last year, as I was I. I was here last year. You cannot tell me the energy this year is not more subdued. It's definitely been very different. It's a lot more of a low-key show, as we talked about after the keynote. That was the vibe we got after the keynote, and it's kind of held for the last you know couple days. There's uh, tons of sessions to go to if you're a developer and interested in that stuff, but as for stuff that's gonna impact consumers immediately, not a whole lot this year, right? Which I think is ultimately a fair thing to say. This is, after all, a developer conference. That right? said, I think it's fair to say the difference that will be powered by the stuff that we saw here at Google I.O. 2017 that's potentially going to be yeah. game changer. Surat with mobile VR, right. making it more cinematic and making the graphics more desktop-like, that's going to be huge. I still cannot stop talking about how much I like Android Go as an idea. Yeah. Again, to recap, it's not a different flavor of Android, it's just a particular configuration of Android O optimized for lower-end devices, which I think going forward will actually help out Google with their fragmentation problem. Yeah, that's a big deal for sure. Um, again, probably the biggest thing that came out of Android, that plus optimizations to make your battery better. Uh, that stuff is like lasting impact. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing that's gonna make the most difference online is easily their push into AI and machine learning. We've been hearing about it for a couple of years now, uh, particularly in products like Google Photos, but it's spreading out across everything Google does. Uh, and they really, I don't think, have a lot of competition in terms of the amount of knowledge they have about users and what they can do with that to make their products smarter. Yeah, we, with regard to Google, I think it's probably fair to say that we offer up our information to them more freely than we do to just about any other company. And we yeah. do it, frankly, with smiles on our faces. As long as that continues to be the case, Google is for sure gonna continue to iterate and figure out ways to chew on that data and, and weave threads of intelligence throughout the products that we use on a daily basis. Yeah, the concern there, obviously, is if and when something goes wrong, it's gonna be a real big problem because Google has so much of your information. Uh, for example, with Photos, they announced this thing where you can share your entire photo library with uh, family members if you want to. No. Literally every photo you take will get no. shared. And it sounds, I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds like there's a lot of protections in place so you're very clear about, you know, you're opting in to put in the email address. It asks you several times. But nonetheless, someone's gonna screw that up and someone's gonna get mad about it. Yeah, I mean, at that point, if, if you, fail to understand the, the signs that are given to you, like that is kind of your fault, but that doesn't yeah. take away the fact that it's gonna suck for somebody. Right, there's gonna be bad press about it, even if it's totally not Google's fault. So yeah, going back to VR, uh, which wasn't as big of a deal as I expected this year, but nonetheless, the announcement that they're gonna start building standalone headsets that don't need a phone or a computer, and that they're gonna come out this year from like, big partners like Lenovo and HTC, that's pretty big news. I'm curious what you think that's gonna do to the VR marketplace as a whole. It's tough to see where it fits in, right? Because you've got on one end, the very high-end desktop experiences, which we're getting close to that on mobile with Surat, but we're obviously not there yet. And on the other hand, very inexpensive, affordable VR solutions. So cardboard, Gear VR, Daydream. Yep. These are things someone could walk into a store and walk out with and be up and running in like five or six minutes and get honestly a very good experience out of it. I'm not entirely sure how a standalone system fits into that dichotomy. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing that they talked about was this positional head tracking. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the standalone headset's gonna be a lot better at that. Uh, it'll be better at determining like how your movements in the real world match up to the virtual world. So it's like, they're trying to get a one-to-one -one basically, where if you move your head a foot in VR, it move, or in real life, it moves a foot in VR. And like, that could be the kind of thing that makes VR experiences more immersive. Again though, we're gonna have to wait and see because all of the stuff is months out. We're also seeing VR get a little more social as well, which is oh, yes. frankly pretty pretty interesting because yeah. when you strap a headset to your face, you're locked into your own little world and good luck trying to share that with other people. Yeah. But with the Daydreaming Freddy's update, you'll be able to cast it to a separate display so people around you can see what you're doing in these vast virtual realms. Yeah. And with YouTube Live or whatever their VR sort of approach it's is. just YouTube VR. YouTube yeah. VR, you can basically engage in watching parties with your friends right. You've got their avatars at the bottom of the screen and it becomes a communal experience, which it really hasn't been able to be before. I think people have been asking for that for a long time. I'm, I live here and you live in San Francisco and you live in New York and we want to watch a movie together and we can't, but like something like this VR sharing situation, if that makes that sort of thing more commonplace, that'd be really cool. Uh, the other sharing they talked about was doing screenshots and uh, recording videos in your VR experiences, sharing those online. Obviously, sharing your gaming experience has become a really big deal, especially on YouTube, so it's not surprising to see Google say, hey, let's make it very easy to share whatever you're doing in your VR headset with the world. I gotta tell you though, the one thing I was really hoping to see was Fuchsia. If oh, only to just yes. understand 
how this slots into Google's operating system strategy. Obviously, yeah. there's Android on one end, on Chrome OS, in a very particular fashion on the other. Yeah. Andromeda was a, a topic of yeah. much it's speculation been a, it's been a last rumor year. for a while now, yeah. But Fuchsia doesn't seem to fit into no. that category either. So, frankly, just any answer they could have provided <laughs> as to what this thing is would have been great to hear. I think no answer tells you a lot about where it's at, though. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, it's incredibly it's, early days for right. this process. If you're not willing to even talk about it with the developer community, that means it's not going to be something that matters to everyone else for a long time. Uh, on my end, I'm a big Chrome OS nerd. I was hoping to hear a little more about what kind of advancements they might be making there. Uh, we'll have to wait on that one as well. Um, and I was hoping for a few more cool Android features that are like, you know, sexy refinements of what's on there. It's all still pretty under the hood. I think we're going to get to hear more about what will matter to consumers immediately with Android O soon. And I guess I was hoping to hear about what dessert O is going to stand for. Yeah, so they're, they're pushing this Oreo thing very hard. They have Oreos in the press room. They're serving Oreo-shaped ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. I, feel, I think it's a psych out. I think they're throwing this in our faces, and they're going to pull out something completely radically dumb Orange different. Julius. That's what he's guessing. Yeah, I guess that's good. Anyway, we've seen a lot here at Google I.O. 2017. Thank you for joining us. We've yep. had a great time bringing it to you. Absolutely. Come back next year. In the meantime, you can find us at engadget.com. Thanks for watching.